Hello there everybody, this is Krista and welcome back to the Krista Chronicles and today it's time for another month of New Deck Digest and what these videos are is truly just me going through and showing any sort of deck I've brought in in the last month. So from the last video to this one, here's what I got going on. Oh my gosh, wait, I'm missing... I just realized I'm missing a deck because I used it this morning. Close call. Okay, anyway. Shall we get right into it? I think we just should. So, as usual, let's... Things dropping. <laughs> okay, deep breath. As usual, let's start out with the... We'll call it a handful. Handful of decks I've gotten in for review. So, these... All came from Llewellyn. Two of them are Blue Angel, though. So, starting off with the latest one I got in that I actually have not reviewed yet. So, upcoming, Golden Keys of Gaia Oracle. Oracle of Elemental Wisdom. This is by Vanessa Tate. Artwork by Hannah Adamazek. I don't think I said that right. I don't think there's a singular chance I did. So, this looks like a really interesting one. Um, profound connection with Mother Earth. So very Mother Nature, Gaia centered, it seems. I don't know. Curious. I was just curious about this one. And what my plan is, I the colors are so pretty on this. Look at these backs. So this is still in order because, again, I have not really gone through this yet. I only really just recently opened it. And uh, yeah, so look out for this one. This might not be a video walkthrough. What I might do is I have a sub stack where I will do written reviews um, of decks and books. Really no rhyme or reason, or I guess there's no rhyme or reason when it comes to decks as to why I do one or the other. Like it's not anything to do with the deck, I should say. It's more just, I don't know, sometimes with some decks, I feel like when there is, I feel like I really want to understand the topic of the deck. Like if it's like a, a seems like a bigger topic that I don't, I'm not personally familiar with, sometimes I have an easier time like really getting into it. Cause when I do my walkthroughs, they're pretty much always unboxings. Uh, I don't know. That's just how I like to do it. <laughs> and so sometimes, though, there are some decks where I'm like, I just kind of want to get into it on my own and then do more of like a written thing about it. But then also, sometimes I just have an easier time writing than talking. And currently, that's the state. And so I want to make sure that like, I really kind of give a full review opinion on this. And I don't, I guess, long story short, I'm not really feeling like I can effectively do that currently in video format. So this one, I have my link to my Substack below. So keep a lookout because I will probably do more of like a blog post on it. But I'm intrigued. It's very different for me. And I think that's another thing where like a first, when something is so out of the box for me personally. I don't think a first impression is really effective. This is one where I really wanna try using it and see how it works for me. Really get the gist of it and then do some kind of review. And I just like writing those kinds of things, but I do think it's really, really pretty. And I love, this is the, if you watched my walkthrough of the Halloween Forever Oracle. It's the same size, so it's not the usual super big Oracle cards that Blue Angel has, which I also really like, but I am really liking this new size. But yes, I do think this is really beautiful. It's got a very, uh, I don't know, again, I, I'm hesitant to say anything because I haven't gotten into it yet, so take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. It seems a little bit like affirmation-y though, like I don't know, uh, an uplifting kind of deck, I would say. A 
I'm curious to try pairing this too again because it is so different for me, but it looks like too we get different suits because this is a very fiery one. And then we get this, we get blue and then it goes into purple and we had, I think it was green to begin with. So yeah, I, I'm really interested to explore this one. Let me know, this one is out already. So let me know if you have this one, what you think, but I think it's really beautiful. And I don't know, I was curious about it. So that is the Golden Keys of Gaia Oracle. Now these next two, I did do video walkthroughs of and really reason being is because they probably like both were like in terms of most highly anticipated tarot and then most highly anticipated oracle for me of at least the second half of the year like these were it so I was super super excited I knew off the bat I was gonna like these so yes there is I do have full walkthroughs of these if you're interested starting off with the steampunk fairy tarot this one even made it into my favorites from this month I love the color of the ribbon this is probably one of my favorite colors this like dusty pink rose color um also Logan from Larkin Legend has a really fun walkthrough of this too and really pointed out how diverse this deck is, which I think is really, really cool. But it's got such a fun fantasy feel to it. It's like, it really is like that steampunk vibe meets fantasy. And so I'm super excited. I've been using this tarot a bunch just for my daily readings. But I think this would be really fun deck to pair with some video games I play or that I want to be playing in the fall books I want to read I just think it's going to be a really fun pair for non-tarot things that I like to pair tarot with but yeah this one has not disappointed oh look at that I think the artwork is beautiful the theming I think is fantastic I love the guidebook so far really such a good one. I am still, oh, look at that magician. So, so excited about this one. I think it's so cool and perfect for this time of year. So that's the steampunk fairy tarot. Okay. And last Yes, last deck I was set here for review is the Halloween Forever Oracle. Again, also I have a walkthrough of this up. And this is one, I haven't used it yet. I haven't used it yet. I think I've just, it's, the vibe outside is not quite it, it yet. I think another week or two though, and this one's gonna be coming out because what I think is cool about this one, oh my God. There are definitely some Halloween feeling cards, but I do agree that I, I think it can be used year round truly as like a, a Halloween exists in our hearts. <laughs> Always. I think it's a really good fall season deck. I guess that's what I'll say. I think it can really, personally, again, as someone who really is super, super seasonal about my decks. Um, this is one I feel like I can use for the entirety of fall. And while I really, I personally have marked it as fall, it, I know it's, I know it's technically not. I think another like week, we have a stretch of like, truly like flat 70 degrees coming up this week. And so I think this is going to be out for me to use anyway. But I really, really like this one. Super excited about it. I love Jasmine Beckett Griffith's artwork. Oh, I just think it's so good. I'm so excited about it. So that is the Halloween Forever Oracle. Okay. 
Now let's get into the Well, okay, let's show this one. This is not, this was not a deck for review, but I did review this one. So this is kind of where it came from, I suppose you could say, question mark. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I feel the need to like over explain, over, I don't know if that is over disclosing. I don't know, whatever. Anyway, eek, nervous. Okay. <laughs> the Heartwood Tarot, yay, I'm sure. Most of you have seen this all over Tarot Tube for good reason since the full versions have come out. So I have my copy and I'm so excited about it. I adore this box. I love the burnt orange color. And yeah, this also has not disappointed. I'm obsessed with this deck and I have been, I had the copy for review which was magical and amazing and unreal. And now I've switched to using this full version and I'm still just as obsessed. I've been wanting to use it every single day. This is like, it's so perfect for this time of year I feel, but I know it's one that, I mean, I used it spring, summer, and it still felt right. I'm using it now getting into fall, still feels right. And I think in the winter too, it's still gonna, it, I think truly it's like just the cozy vibe for all year round. And I am so excited about this one. Like really truly, I love the Three Trees Tarot decks, but this has been the one that probably my most consistently used one. I did, there's just something about the theming of this one that I just wanna use it all the time. Truly all the time. So, Heartwood Tarot, so excited about that one. So beautiful. <clears throat> okay, now we're getting into the ones that I have purchased myself here. So, we're just, no particular order. But this is the latest one, truly came in yesterday. <laughs> the Dream Keepers Tarot, now this came about because we were talking about it in Thea's Garden of the Goddess secret member space discord and it's one that I've had on my list for quite some time that I wanted to get and just was curious about but I never did because I was like "Ooh, is it gonna be too similar to the um Terra Mystical Moments which I really like but just I just don't seem to use it much so it's one of those things where it's like, uh, I it could be similar and then like, you know, I don't know why I do that because every time I think that the one that I'm comparing it to it ends up being totally different or I just like end up using it way more and I already have a feeling that's going to happen with this one. So, but what, anyway, long story short, I was like, do you all think it's similar? And everyone was like, no. <laughs> it's like, okay, sold. Great. <laughs> And I, I've truly had it for a day, but already I am so excited. I'm so excited I decided to get it because now having it in hand, I see that they really, I mean, I see, I'm, I shouldn't say like they don't compare because I understand why I was comparing them, but they have totally different feels. I just lost all the words in my brain. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Okay, anyway. Wow, my brain really just blanked out there. Anywho, I am really excited about this one. I'm really excited to get to know it. I think it's so beautiful. I think the images are so interesting. Like, I was looking through it yesterday and it was one of those things where it's there were so many cards where I was like, oh, like that's such an interesting way to look at that. Like this fool card, you see she's like stepping on a man's head, drinks being offered to her. It's this idea that she's leaving behind this old way, this old way of being, going on to a new adventure. Just so cool. I think someone said that it was almost like 
mystical moments felt a bit more in like a childlike space where this feels a bit more um I don't want to use the word grown up eek but that's the only word I can think of a bit more like I don't know um someone was saying too that it was Jess from Jess Reads Cards was saying that the creator made this or her creation process was her kind of finding her way back to an idea of divine feminine so looking at it through that lens too is really makes it I don't know just even more fascinating and now that I have both I totally see that where and I think that might help me use mystical moments a bit more as well because I do see that now comparatively as like a bit more childlike which I love but yeah anyway anyway have we said enough? I think so. I love that Hierophant card. It's just so pretty and kind of spooky. So I'm really excited about it. Dreamkeeper's Tarot. Okay, what do we want to look at next? Ooh, okay, this came in from Kickstarter. The Tamara Tarot. I was excited about this one because this is from the same creators as the Habit Trot Tron Tarot question mark, which I don't have but was curious about. But then I saw images they shared of this deck they were coming out with, and I decided to wait for this one because something about it I just I don't know. I just really liked. I think. I really like this kind of uh, like almost window cutout we get. I don't think the other deck has that. I don't know. I, I'm excited about this. I think it's really, really cool. I haven't used this a ton yet either, but I've liked what I've seen so far. It covers a time period that I do not think I have anything else of. Let me see how it's described. I wanna say like 1920s though. Um, yeah, 20th century art, which personally, at least to my memory, I don't think I have anything that really does something similar, because usually, personally, I like to go back a bit farther in history with things, but... I'm really excited to have, I think this is going to pair really well with also some books that I have on my TBR list because I do really like kind of 19th century mysteries and I think this would be so cool that it makes me think of uh, like Miss Fisher's murder mysteries. Oh, what else? Um... Oh, there's another series I really like. I cannot think of it, but yeah, I just, it's got such a different feel from any other vintage historic feeling deck I have. Cause it just, it hits on a time period that I just don't have something of. Cause usually I go kind of at least like Victorian era <laughs> when it comes to uh, vintage-y decks but I'm really excited about this one I think it's got a cool feel to it I have a feeling it's gonna be awesome in like November when I I tend to really really lean into vintage style decks in November it's November has a real ancestral feel to me and so I think this is gonna be perfect for that I'm excited about it the Tamara Tarot Okay, I'm so excited. I'm so excited about this one. Okay, this is, I've got the Tree Whisper, The Tree Whisper Oracle by Maggie Black. This is the first edition. Oh my gosh. I am so stoked about this. So randomly, Maggie Black posted on her Instagram that she found two extra copies and was selling them. And to tell you, it, it felt like 
fate <laughs> intervening because I somehow checked Instagram. It was like a minute after she posted it and immediately I was like, please, <laughs> me, please. And so I was able to get this one. She is doing a pre-order sometime in September, which I knew about and already planned to get truly whatever it is she was offering because I have the latest Tree Whisper Oracle, the Dream, Dream Travelers Edition. And I love it. It's so good. That one has a real winter feel to me. And it's like each deck kind of seems to suit a certain season. So of course this one here has a very fall feel to it. And then there's the Secret Garden Edition, which has a very summer feel. Um, and so whatever it is she was offering that I didn't have, I was planning on getting. But then when she had these and I saw it was the first edition which suits fall, I was like, oh my gosh, I wanna get that right now because then I can use it for the entirety of fall season. I'm so excited. And then also I was able to, you know, instead of buying <laughs> like two decks at once or whatever, I'll, I'll break up the purchase a little bit. I was so excited though, can you tell? <laughs> I just really, really love what she's done here. I think it's so interesting. And it's one of those things that I really had to like get it in hand and try it out like I did with the Dream Travelers because I'm not gonna lie, before that, well, I thought they the cards were so beautiful. I was like, I don't know if I get it. <laughs> But I do, I get it now. Cause I'm like, everyone loves these. Like what, what is it about them? Besides like, again, I can just acknowledge that they're beautiful cards, but I get it now. There is something magical about them. And I've just loved using this deck. The keywords are amazing. The images are amazing. Oh, I was so excited too that I have this fall version of it. If you have this deck, has anyone rounded the corners? I can't decide. I truly can't decide if I should just, cause usually when I get a like just square cut deck like this, I round the corners. But something about this one, I'm like, I don't know. I'm almost like, should I just keep it as intended? I don't know. If anyone has rounded the corners, let me know how you feel about that. <laughs> Do you, are you happy you did it? How does it look? I'd love to know. Cause I can't decide, but I am over the moon about having this. So that is the Tree Whisper Oracle by Maggie Black. This is the first edition. And again, I know she's doing a September pre-order. So what I'm going to do, uh, what am I gonna put as a link? Maybe her Instagram. I'm gonna put a link below with this, even though like it's not something you technically can buy right this second. I probably will link her Instagram because that's where I personally keep up to date, but maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll put her website because I do want to say she has a newsletter you can sign up for that I know I'm signed up for. I just tend to not keep track of emails well. So I, I keep track of what she's doing in multiple places. But anyway, that's that. Okay. Another pre-order was this one that was on Kickstarter probably like a year or two ago now that I didn't back, but they did another pre-order recently and I got in it now. This is the, it's the mini mice tarot, but this is the big mice edition. So it's just the regular size tarot. Now I'm not gonna lie. I bought this <laughs> and this is entirely on me, like truly, I made a connection in my brain and then never looked into it. I just, I was like, it must be. I thought that this tarot went with a graphic novel series that I really like, that I have at the library. It's, it's for kids. And it's also about like these kind of soldier adventuring mice. And to tell you, like, they look so similar. Not at all saying that these artists copy them. N not by any means. When you look at them side by side, like I did, <laughs> uh, probably, I don't know, it was this week or the week before, I was like, oh, <laughs> no, these are not the same at all. But, 
Like just the vibe was similar enough where I was convinced in my head that this tarot was based off of those graphic novels. They are not. <laughs> They're not. So, yeah. Anyway, I still think it's cute. I like the, I like mice. I like it, these adventuring mice here, but I haven't really used it so far because ha effort, I think since having that realization, um, I, I kind of almost need to like give it some space to let go of that connection I made, which again, totally on me. But yeah, I'm excited about that. It seems like, it, I think the reason I was confused is because it clearly follows a storyline that at least when I was just jumping right into the guidebook, let's discover this together. It felt like I was like missing something. Yeah, there's like all these character, like it jumps right into character names. And I don't know if it's that it's supposed to reveal the story like through reading this in order. I don't know, but I kind of remember seeing on Kickstarter that you could get this story but now I can't find any kind of story. And so I think that's the other thing, or other reason I made that assumption was because I was like, oh, like read these books, know the characters, but that's not the case. So I'm a little confused, I guess, because I'm not familiar, there is a clear storyline going on here and a story behind these cards. I just don't know what it is. <laughs> so if anyone has this deck and can tell me more, please let me know. Um, or if like, like, cause I, I don't know if I'm just misremembering that, but I feel like there was a story you could get. It was like maybe even a digital version of it. I don't know. I don't know. But I'd love to know cause I think it's so, this is a really cool deck and I'd love to know like the little fantasy story behind these mice. It's very like, uh like Tale of Despero almost. I don't know. I really think I could like this because there are a lot of fantasy books that are based on mice that I like. So I just need to, I need to figure it out. So anyway, if you know anything, let me know. But I do think it's really beautifully done. Oh, I think it's cool that I got the bigger version, but there is a little mini version, which is super cute. Yeah, mini mice tarot. And again, I totally appreciate that these creators came up with this whole world like for this tarot deck. I think that is so amazing and cool. I just need to figure out how to learn more about the world. All right, then since we were kind of doing pre-ordery things, let's just do the last one. My mini divvies. So these are the latest mini divvies put out by Holly Oddly. I got all three, of course, cause I love them. There is the lore, the end and the witching. Um, how do I want to show these? Excuse the scissor opening <laughs> of these. Perfect. I, was so excited when I saw the themes of these new ones. I just think they're so fun. Like we have the Loch Ness Monster, all sorts of mythical creatures and folklore and super cool. I just love the whole idea of the mini divvies. I love how easy they are to use. I like how customizable they are. Like you can truly get one and it's such a usable deck, but then I personally love to collect them all. <laughs> So I have them all. And so every once in a while, I'll just take out the ones that I'm liking and using the most at the moment and I'll mix them together or just kind of build my own deck. And it's just so fun. I love how they all have a different color scheme too, like purple, blue, and red. So yeah, super excited about these. Let's show the witching one because I showed the ends in a video recently, which if you haven't seen, it's the latest tarot and neurodivergence I put out. I talked about how I use this deck for transitions and it really helps. But, oh, I, I really love this witching one too. It's just so fun. It's got these really simple keywords or key phrases on it and yeah, just really, really 
usable and whimsical and fun. Look at King James I, the enemy. It's just like so thoughtful. And there really is nothing like the whimsy you get with a Holly Audley deck. It's just so fun to see how her brain's working through some of these things. Because you could just tell there is there is some there's a little spark of magic going on in that brain, and it's really cool to see. So excited to have these. I've been loving using them. I also really like using these as decks to bring with me for just like a quick single card draw. So often I will pick one out, whether it's for the day or really it's been for the week that I bring with me to work and I use this as like a single card draw before I start my day and that's, it's been my favorite deck that I've tried that out with at work so far and it's just been fun to kind of pick out a different theme for the week. Like I think right now I have the messages one there but this, this one stays here all the time because of how I like to use it or it also just, I don't know, kind of comes with me everywhere but yeah, really loving these, the mini dibbies. Okay. This one I got off of eBay, so it's nothing new, but new to me, obviously. The Pythia Botanica Oracle by Leela and Olive. I don't have any of their decks, but I'm always so curious about it because it's just got this like, I don't know. They have this good witchy feel to it that I really like. I just... I don't know, I couldn't decide on which one I wanted, but I finally decided on this and found it on eBay. Look at these backs. So good. I love their Instagram account because someone, someone over there <laughs> is a gardener and they just post the most beautiful bouquet images. So it made me want to get this one, which is all flowers. Which I know, how many, how many flower decks can a girl have? And... The answer is many. <laughs> and the reason I like this is because it has some really unique keywords. And also it has keywords, which I think is cool. I think a lot of times plant decks don't, um, which, you know, I don't know. It just depends on what I'm looking for that day, whether I want that or not. But I think these like transfer grief, just like cool keywords on this one. I had an idea too. I got it because I wanted to pair it with something. Or I saw it paired with something. I don't remember what that is now. But it definitely pairs with a lot. And also, this felt like a plant deck I could really utilize in the fall and winter as well. Because I tend to pretty much put all of my plant decks away until spring and summer, but... Sometimes I want that plant energy and I think this is, I don't know, it brings it to like this witchy place and something about the illustrations and the colors used being muted almost feels like these are like dried specimens of all these plants. Like they were harvested for drying and we're looking at them in inside rather than outside. So yeah, I'm excited about this one. I think it's really neat. So that's the Pythia Botanica. Oh no, I remember why. I remember why I got this. It was, it's something to do with another deck in here. Yes. Okay. I saw like what this is based around. Is it going to be in here? Mm -hmm. I need to find, find that. Because it's, it's, it was because it's based around the Pythia. Oh, my brain's not working. I need to find, I need to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> Hold on, cause it, like, what is the figure of the Pythia? I have it on the tip of my brain and it's not coming. Yes, 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 okay. Okay, Pythia was the high priestess and oracle of the temple of Apollo in, in Delphi. Yes. Okay, so I loved the... She's also known as the Delphic Oracle or the Oracle of Delphi. Okay, I remember why. 
I got this now. It's funny because I have used it in this way. It's been really cool. So I thought since that's sort of the, a bit of the theming of the deck here, um, it would be cool to use with some of my Greek mythology slash Greek goddess decks I've gotten recently as having this be the central message and then using the mythology decks with it. It would almost be like, okay, here's the, I don't know, it'd be like this cool thing of like a message directly from the god or goddess and then the like interpretation from the Oracle of Delphi. That was, I don't know, that was the thought process going on. That's the Pythia Botanica Oracle. So let's get into the deck I was using it with and like what my motivation was because I also have the Tarot of the Huntress by Kara. I can't think of Kara's last name. Kara. Small? Anyway, anyway. Kara from, no, gosh, I'm so sorry everyone, my brain like really has been a little bit turned off lately. Thoughts have not been happening, so anyway, Force Moon Maiden, Force Moon Maiden. This is her latest tarot deck. <laughs> and immediate buy, it was an immediate buy. Look at these backs. Ah, uh, so pretty, so pretty. So this is a deck all based around Artemis, who I just love as a figure. And I've been using this deck a bunch. I just think it's so pretty. I love this deep green we get. This, it's got like this dark forest feel to it. It's so beautiful. She did such an amazing job. I like with the aces that we get these animals too. How pretty is that? I just love it. I think her choices are amazing. And yes, so I've been pairing this with the Pythia Botanical lately because it's been, again, it's in this cool thing of like, here's the tarot almost coming from Artemis and then the Oracle card tying them together as like a, okay, here's what, as if you're talking to an Oracle. Am I making any sense there? I don't know, but that was the idea and it's been working really well. I like it. So yes, I've been loving this tarot so good. I actually have, so I have the um, Tarot of Persephone's Garden, which I have a walkthrough up of, but she also came out with the uh, Chthonic edition. So it focuses on kind of the underworld aspect of Persephone. It's not in this video because it's not here at the time I'm making it, but it's, it's on its way. I told myself, I was like, no, no, like, I already have the, the first edition, like, I don't need to do that, and then, you know, I don't know, and then I did, <laughs> and I'm, but I'm excited about it. I just kept seeing, you know what it was, I kept seeing Kara's Instagram posts using the, that new edition, I'm like, man, it would be cool to have both, so that we shall, but yeah, anyway, loving this one, I think it's so cool. Tara of the Huntress. Okay, last but not least, I've got two decks that I got from Game Crafter that finally came in. I don't usually order from Game Crafter much because I don't know what it is, but I feel like, does anyone else experience this where I know ordering from make playing cards can take a bit, but I feel like Game Crafter for some reason just takes even longer. I don't know if I'm just, that's just all in my head. It absolutely could be. So I was waiting until I really like, had two things I really wanted. Two things at least, you know what I mean? To kind of like also make the shipping a little bit worth it. And so I've got these two that are both ones that have been on my list for one of them years, <laughs> the other one a year. And then I kept seeing them. I was like, okay, it's time. So the first one, Craft Decadence Oracle. This one's so cool. And I feel like everyone I've seen who has this loves it. And then when Andy and I went on our little trip last year, she had just gotten this. And so I was able to play with it. 
and I loved it. But again, I don't know, it just, <laughs> I get real hung up about Game Crafter for no good reason other than my own impatience. But yeah, this deck is so cool. It's got really, really cool key phrases and key words on it. It's just so out of the box, but in a way that somehow makes sense. It, sometimes it's a little bit of a head scratcher, but again, I really, I don't know, I've been liking that lately. It's almost like a puzzle my brain gets to work out. So yeah, really excited about this one. Beautiful collage deck. This one also always makes me think of Meg from Rose Honey Ritual. I just feel like, because that's the first place I saw this deck and I know she talks about it a bunch. I want to say it's probably a favorite of hers, but even just looking in the box, I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's Meg. Like this is, to me, I'm like, this is Meg's deck. <laughs> anyway. So then the other one, the Black Lily Tarot. And I'm actually really excited I got this, these two together because I think they pair really well. But again, this is one that is absolutely not new. It's been on my list forever. I just never, I don't know, just never bought it. But here we are now. I think it's really cool. Is it still in, no, it's not in order. It's just one that's, it's, I don't know, it's like purposefully kind of strange. Where it's like the proportions are a little bit off sometimes. You're not quite sure what's going on. It's fascinating. Like truly such an interesting deck. And so far using it, one that I really like to really look at the images and be like, ooh, what feeling is this bringing up for me? I think that's... What I'm trying to get across with this deck, it's like for the way it's drawn, it like really evokes very like, I don't know, strong feelings to me of like, oh, what's happening? And I think that's an interesting energy to play with. But I really particularly like them paired together. So that was kind of fun that I got them in on the same day because I ordered them together. And I've been using them together which works because they're both a uh, smaller size deck. So yeah. And is that it? Yes, oh my gosh, that's it, okay. That, my friends, was the last deck I had to show you. So I'd love to know, have you gotten in anything new lately that you're really liking? I'd love to know, but other than that, that's all I have for you today. So I hope you're having a great day so far and I'll see you again very soon.